Highly anticipated games can sometimes be a double-edged sword, especially to critically acclaimed developers. If the game doesn't live up to the developer's reputation, it can sometimes come back and bite them in the end. That's the situation that's happened with Hades, Free Radical and Ubisoft's upcoming first-person shooter. While the game has an interesting concept, poor visuals, a weak plotline, and bad mechanics mar what would have otherwise been a really nice showcase for the PS3. My name is Shane Carpenter. I was born into a world of war. Hayes is the story of Shane Carpenter, a young mental soldier that's dispatched, along with the rest of his squad, to the Boa region of South America. Now, Mantle is the largest PMC in the world, and it has an army of enhanced soldiers boosted with a specialized supplement or drug known as Nectar. Mantle's been asked to go and pacify the region from a new radicalized group called the Promise Hand and its leader, a militant person known as Skin Coat, so named because he likes to supposedly skin and wear his victims. Unfortunately for Carpenter, he finds that his mission to supposedly liberate the hearts and minds of the indigenous people is not what it seems to be, and he finds himself defecting to the rebel cause and fighting against his former squad mates. Now, initially this seems like a pretty interesting premise for the game, but it's brought down by a feeble amalgamation of concepts such as making every single Mantel soldier a alpha male stereotypical jarhead that has absolutely no morality or sense of responsibility and they just simply enjoy killing for killing's sake. I am so ready to liberate some natives! Hell yeah! Boosh! It's further distance because Carpenter never really seems to expose himself to these emotions or these outbursts, which makes him stand out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of the people he's in his squad with. Dude, we knock these asses down like Skittles! It almost makes you wonder why he signed up to begin with. Especially when, as you start to play on through the game, you realize what a wimpy character this is. He's always lost, he's always whining through his missions, and he never really has a sense of really wanting to take charge for what he's done. There's no reason why you'd even like this guy. Further widening this disconnect between Shane, Mantel troops, and the player is the deliberate attempt to tie a soldier's immorality to the use of nectar. This is obviously something that the developers decided to put in there as kind of a commentary on, on the Mantel troops' attempt of viewing the rest of the war as a video game as opposed to real life. Unfortunately, because you rarely ever see the supposed crash from the high in the time that you do, it's really laughable and poorly handled. Everything seems forced and horribly acted, not exactly something that you really feel that you should care or even connect to. That was like taking candy from a cripple baby! I was all like, like pow, 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 yeah! This is unfortunate because the mechanic of Nectar is actually pretty creative. It heightens Shane's senses and it makes enemies stand out because of their silhouettes that pop off from any kind of cover or any, any foliage that they happen to be hiding behind. Unfortunately, for all of that, the nectar mechanic is somewhat flawed. It makes the game really easy, and unfortunately, the boost that you constantly get whenever you kill somebody just extends that feeling, making the gameplay levels really simple to do, even on higher difficulty levels. The other problem is that as soon as you start to get used to the nectar feeling, it's over and it's gone and you don't really get that sense back because you're now on the rebel side and you don't use it to inject yourself. In fact, you use it more as a tactic or a weapon. The bigger problem with that being that you don't really get this overall sense of fear because you're a rebel and they're mantle. They're supposed to be superhuman and super powered, and yet they're really, really stupid. They don't use the abilities, they don't use the attacks, and so it kind of comes off as a really, really gimmicky mechanic. While the single player has a lot of gimmicks that don't really work, the multiplayer actually works rather well. Not only can you play the game with four player co-op or even two player split screen, but you can also take advantage of three of the multiplayer modes. Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, or Team Assault. Deathmatch and Team Deathmatch allow you to put in bots if you don't happen to have enough players and you really want a challenge. But Team Assault is different because it gives you different objectives for either side which you have to either take care of or defend to succeed. While the technical aspects of multiplayer are quite nice, the visual aspects of Haze aren't. 
This is a very, very generic looking title, and something that doesn't really look like it appears on the PS3 well at all. In fact, it almost looks a little bit like a PS2 game, with the number of texture rips and texture tears, character pop-ins, and other visual inaccuracies that really don't show off this game very well. It probably has some of the worst fire textures that we've seen in a good 10-15 years, even harkening back to the 386 days on a PC. Unfortunately, Haze is one of those games that was pretty creative on, on concept, but very, very weak in execution. Poor gameplay, weak visuals, and an unsatisfying storyline in multiple directions all led up to a title that probably should have been put back on the shelf a long time before it was decided to be released. You feeling righteous today, boys? Sir, yes, sir! Boosh!